Thanks, Chair. Thanks for your presentation. Um, I live in one of these multi-unit developments as well. Um, and I think it, it's actually really good that we're having this discussion and it, we should, we need more of them because this is a, a really serious problem. And could I just suggest to the chair and members, we actually need to bring in house owners as well because there's two parts to this jigsaw. And um, I think, I know that there are house owners who would be delighted to be allowed to testify here about their problems. It is not in any way to divide the two, by the way. I'm just making the point that they're interlinked. Because essentially what happened here was around, I think you said 15 years ago, similarly with myself, around 15 years ago, these units were built in the boom. There wasn't sufficient you know, forethought uh, on the part of local authorities um, and on the part of planners and on the part of uh, the political establishment either. And what has happened in some cases is that house owners were lumped in to the management company, which has led to a, a resentment among house owners, which is part of the reason why you have huge arrears in, in the management companies overall, because um, you have house owners who are withholding on principle because they feel it was an injustice that they were ever you know, foisted with these in the first place. So back in, I think it was 2006, under uh, when Bertie Hermes Taoiseach, this was raised in the doll, I know by Joe Higgins, my um, uh, colleague. But a circular was then issued to local authorities saying that houses couldn't be now, from here on in, put in if you had a front entrance and a back garden. Um, but we have, uh, we have a, what, a legacy issue whereby in Fingal, as was said, in Dublin West, myself, the Taoiseach, shared the constituency. It's the capital of these multi-unit developments and problems with these management companies are rampant. Uh, and in terms of the issues that you, you raised, first of all, on insolvency uh, and on collected fees, 70 per cent. And you see, there's a number of reasons for that, and I absolutely agree about the building defects. In some cases, we have pyrite in my own estate, um, which is another reason why people are feeling they're not going to pay. So as well as a management company issue, we have the pyrite issue as well. Um, but I just wanted to refer to uh, company law. I think you touched on a, a lot of issues here. And you mentioned inadequate accounts and failure to log accounts. And... Um, in some cases, I have examples here of invoices that have been sent to people that aren't added up properly, you know, that are actually, and I mean by thousands. I've got one invoice here, which I can, you know, pass around to the committee or whatever later, where 3,000 and 3,000 is added up as 10,000. And when the person tries to challenge it, they get nowhere. And this is in Tyrrellstown, and the residents don't mind and they want this raised and have gone public about the, the problems there over years. Um, in another case, the interest that's levied, you know, it, 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 it multiplies and it, it, it's, it's an incentive to try to push people to pay. But um, it just adds to the absolute desperation because we all know that particularly in the recession, a lot of people just couldn't afford this luxury anymore. Um, so I think there is two issues. There's apartment owners and there's house owners. And I, I would contend that it's in the interest of the apartment owners for the houses to get released out of the management company to at least get rid of that. Um, well, it, 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 it's been a democratic decision in well, our well, estate of 700 by both apartment owners well, and home, and by both apartment owners and homeowners because you have to get agreement at, a, at an extraordinary general meeting. And the council cooperated with this process. But unfortunately, and we, we found a legal mechanism to release the homeowners, but unfortunately we haven't been able to actually enact it because of mainly absentee landlords. And I also would say that one of the reasons for the arrears is there's a lot of absentee apartment owners who've rented out the apartments and are nowhere to be found and they don't care about the maintenance of the estate. They, they couldn't give a toss that, you know, the grass isn't getting cut or the walls aren't being painted. Um, so in, in relation to the MUD Act, one of the issues that we, we need is we also need that where people democratically get together and decide to release the houses, that there is a way for them to do that cleanly and legally. Um, and then at least the apartment owners have 
management companies are meant to be small. They're not meant to be hundreds in them, really. You know, that's the way in, 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 on the continent. Um, the other problem with management companies is 20 to 25 per cent of the charges are actually just administration charges. Just the existence of the management company itself means that there's going to be high charges. The other problem is legal fees. If a resident does go and challenge uh, an invoice that they feel is wrong or a service charge that they feel they're being wrongly charged for because they haven't had the services, unfortunately what just happens, and I've seen it, the, even if they win the case, the charges get lumped back onto the residents, the people in the management company, the management company uh, shareholders, as they're called, but they're just homeowners or whatever. Um, and the other issue is insurance fees are massive. Often people are being charged huge rates of insurance for a car parking space. Um, and that's been the case, certainly, in Tyrrellstown. I just wanted to mention taking in charge as well. Uh, in the case, again, of uh, Tyrrellstown, where there's eight management companies running 2,000 units, uh, it's been identified through a letter from the council that the council has no formal written compliance documents relating to the areas of Tyrrellstown that the residents have asked about. And that's a breach, actually, of the planning permission of Condition 16. But yet which would bring into question the whole existence of the management company legally, you would think, um, because if they haven't been properly conveyed. So both the directors of the management company and officials of the council participated in transferring these areas, but yet there isn't clear maps and conveyancing documents to back it up. Um, and I just think that, you know, that this is unacceptable. Uh, the way that this has happened. And I also think then when people go to court who, both apartment owners, by the way, and homeowners I've seen and been with in court, uh, who often have unfair charges, and they challenge these issues, there's a block there because once you've entered a contract, you know, you've legally signed and there's nothing a judge can do. Uh, and some might be sympathetic to the plight of the apartment or house owner, but they have to just agree with the management company. So th this is a really serious problem, and it's a political problem, because uh, you can see you have no legal way to sort this out, really. There has to be, in my opinion, laws brought in at state level, at doll level, that assist homeowners and apartment owners and house owners to sort out these issues. I, I completely agree with your, your, your suggestion of an ombudsperson or a regulator. That would be at least somewhere people could go uh, to sort. But I do think we need much clearer legislation to uh, allow people to get released from the contracts, which I believe would assist the apartment owners. In the case of the estate, I'm in myself in Castle Curra, um, the apartments haven't been painted in the 15 years. Uh, one of the reasons is because, uh, the, like you said, with defects, there's been huge charges fixing the roofs in storms, which we're having severe weather events all the time now. And, but that should have been addressed at planning uh, the checking and building control stage. But it wasn't. And now the apartment owners are lumped with the charges, and it's sucking all of the money, preventing them having a sinking fund. So. We, we need much more discussion about this. And the problem when you raise this in the doll is, I have raised this, it gets passed to, because it's a management company, that it's a building and it's, sorry, that it's a business issue. It gets passed over, but really it is housing and planning at the end of the day. And I do think, Chair, if, if we agreed that we would have more discussion about this and about what's needed to resolve it, I think you've introduced the topic very well. Thank you. Uh, David or Brian, which in, 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 in an overarching sense, I think what we would comment that that um, you know a lot of the issues there, um, I think, could be addressed by having a robust regulator. Um, the the, the multi-unit development act is in place, but nobody is regulating breaches of it. And and I think where you would have an avenue to go to, be it on arbitration or or, or um, just to uh, point out breaches, and where a regulator could actually act. I think you would nip a lot of these issues uh, in, in the bud. Um, 
With regards to um, the split of houses and, and apartments, I think that that's something that we, we, we certainly uh, could explore. Um, we do see, I have to say, um, in a number of developments, the houses versus the apartments kind of thing. That's a big um, problem. And um, it is, you know, everybody when they sign up, um, and I think probably, again, we, we touched on the education part of it. If you're buying in, and mo most developments, I know certainly Dublin City Council, where, where I am, um, most developments are the, the local authority will put in uh, a condition that that a management company is is, is established, and 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 that's at the, at, at at the very initial stages of it. So, are there thoughts or discussions with regards to whether, whether that is necessary in all cases? Certainly, it's necessary in apartments, but maybe not necessary in houses. But once you sign in, you're signing in with all of the other um, um, owners uh, as well as well as the management company itself. It, it, it's, uh, so those contracts are, are, are in place and it's very difficult then to, to roll back on that once, once you're in. Um, in terms of you know, administration charges and, and the issues with regards to fees, um, one of the good aspects of the MUD Act uh, was that it actually laid out um, how uh, service charges are, are to be levied. And um, it, at, at a, a general meeting of, of, of the management company, uh, members get to vote on passing a budget. And we would just encourage, and again, it's really about regards to having a public discussion as to what your rights and responsibilities are as a, as a member of a management company, as an owner of a unit, be that a house or, or, or an apartment. And I know we're titled Apartment Owners Networks, but we're trying to kind of get away from um, apartment only um, um, in terms of we're essentially representing um, residential units in managed estates um, and uh, the apartment owners network was, a, was an early title but we, we found that we need to, to, to broaden ourselves a little bit more so we maybe, maybe we need a rebranding um, but the, the, there, there are powers for people to, to, to have their say and get involved and if, and if the majority of people feel the service charge is you know, unsatisfactory you can actually you know, you, you can exercise your democratic power and maybe we need to, to look at the percentages there in terms of the, the MUD Act as well and, and finally you know, we would again encourage people to step up and become directors of, of their management companies. Unfortunately, people are absolutely petrified about stepping up and becoming a director because they see company law, they see fire safety defects, and they just see them being blamed for absolutely everything, and they don't want to go near it. But that actually means that people don't get, in, don't get their hands dirty, they don't then get to understand the nitty gritty um, and, what, and why service charges need to go up in some instances, and then they're terribly frustrated when they get the service charge bill in January or February and they're not seeing the services that they're paying for. So we, we really need a, a broad public discussion um, with regards to how the multi-unit development model and owner management company model actually works in this country and, and maybe there'll be a better understanding from, it, from, both, from all sides with regards to, 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 to the issues that we face. Thank you. Derek, you want to come back yeah. Because I, I want to follow what Brian said and, and what Deputy Coppinger has said. And, uh, much of which I actually agree with. I live in a multi-unit development as well. I pay management fees, and I, like Ruth, live in Fingal, and Fingal is, has you know, a, a large amount of these. I do think it's very dangerous to start splitting houses and apartments. They're homes at the end of the day, and I've seen that as well. There, there has been, and I, I understand, I know the Castle Curra situation specifically, Ruth knows it better because she lives there, but there is an obligation. I think what, what it's about is transparency. I think what drives people mad is that they can't get in under what the fees and the charges are for and about breaking them down. And I know that I've dealt with a number of owner management companies that have actually been very clear in, in outlining what the fees are for. No one likes paying fee, no one likes paying taxes, okay, so that's an element of it. But if you know what it's being spent on, so the fee isn't charged in most estates for nothing. It's to pay insurance, it's to pay bins, it's to pay maintenance, it's sinking funds. So it's not that a big company that is owned by someone else that we don't know is actually coming in and saying, well, give me 500 euro or 1,000 euro a year, and that's it. The problem is when you don't know how it's being spent. There's also a problem when there's advocating non-payment is a big issue because when people don't pay uh, and when you've signed a contract and purchased a home and it's very clear in the planning condition, as you rightly say, Brian, in the conditions that it's a managed estate, and you may not be happy how it's being run, that's another issue. The idea of just simply saying you can just 
move directly out and not pay because you're not happy. I deal with a lot of estates where people aren't happy. I won't mention them here in my own area and we work through it. And in some instances, by the way, the big problem is the residual owners. It can be the, the builders who own a number of units, it can be S approved housing bodies as well. People who own big chunks who won't engage at all. That, so I agree with, with Deputy, Deputy Coppinger on many aspects of the fact that we need to have a further discussion. Uh, we need to, it's a complex issue because what's the definition of a house? When you talk about houses versus apartments, there's duplex units, there's all these different things, there's, there's apartments that don't have lifts, there's, you know, and actually the, the multi-unit setting, I put it to you, a lot of people like to live, you know, it, it, when they're designed properly, they can be very good for communities and sustainable communities, and they work very well. There's been issues of really bad planning, really bad building, and I think that's when we get back to the defects, the roofs and things, the local authorities do have a responsibility and should have a responsibility because they're the planning authority. So if the, the standards and the checks weren't done at the time, we've got to look at areas, Ruth has mentioned examples there of roofs with apartment blocks, we see it all the time with extreme weather events that should, not even extreme weather events, should be able to withstand it. You know, it is a massive issue. And I know this is the, the first committee meeting on, on this committee since, since it took over in the housing piece, but this is, I think you're right in what you've highlighted today, it is a ticking time bomb. We won't agree on every aspect of, of how it's dealt, and each is, many estates are different. It's complex. But I think unless you have a regulator or arbitrator on this, there are changes in legislation that, that, that are very clearly needed, and I think that the Oireachtas has, absolutely has a role in it. I think you have a role in future planning. But, there, but the situation is that I don't think a local authority should be, should be told, well, look, we don't want you to build any mixed developments. I think mixed developments can be very good, can be very well planned if they're done properly and they work. And there are many that do work properly. So I think, look, the, the defect element of it is, I, I think, at fundamentally at the end of the day, this, you know, the, the whole area of fees and sinking funds in particular is something that's going to happen. We mentioned two specific examples of bad building in Priory Hall, but also Longboat Quay, and then the cost of fixing that. So the liability to homeowners, and I'm not talking about apartments or houses, I'm talking about homeowners, because at the end of the day, they're homes for people. Um, you know, to quantify that, we'll run into the tens and hundreds of millions, one would have thought. So this is something we really need to grapple with. And so that's why I think that the presentation today was, was very timely and very important. Thank you. Ruth? Yeah. I don't want to take up your spot by talking about houses, so um, maybe what we could suggest is that we would have a session where we would deal with the houses. I, I don't mean to separate the two at all. I just, there are residual issues because um, you don't need a management company for an ordinary house. That is the reality. They were set up for apartments. But, and people, particularly in the last 10 years with the recession, said, I'm not paying this anymore because it's not justified and I can't afford it, I've lost my job. But, um, you know, when people see a millionaire in a mansion getting their grass cut in their estate and then they have to pay for their little shrub to be maintained, that's the reality. It isn't about people make these decisions for themselves. Um, so I think it's more but, complex than that. But yeah, but I'm just... I think we need a, a discussion on it, and we should bring in maybe some of the homeowners who uh, have that. So, David or Brian, do you want to come back in? Or? 